Here's all my poodles with my daughter, Gemma, having a bit of a run outside. It's cooled down a little bit now. Those really hot days were it was too hot to come outside. It's lovely today. A bit overcast and a bit of a breeze, so dogs are enjoying a run. Black one loves to chase the ball. G'day guys! Welcome back. I am going to try these same colours again today that I did the other day. Love these colours. I just wasn't that happy with the end result. Uh, I think I could do better with my cell shape. This was the flip and drag. And this is my theory, and I'm going to see if I can prove it either way today. Because I dragged down, and I pretty much covered the whole surface, um, and because I wanted to keep my stripes, I didn't really tilt side to side. So a lot of my cells are elongated. You can see that. They're not as round as I would like. So this time I'm going to do my usual three flip cups, just flip them over and then I'll be tilting side to side and just see if I can get that round shape that I want. You can see how elongated most of them are, so that's what I'm going to do today. It's almost dry, well I shouldn't say almost dry, the sides are dry but the middle's still wet. I think it's probably three days old. Let's pop it there out of the way inspiration piece so I have got this, my three flip cups today the big ones uh, this was an old canvas that I've scraped I can't remember when I did it but I found it today so oh yay let's use that <laughs> uh, so same pouring medium as the previous one 70% Elmer's glue or 30% water you can use school glue um, the global glue I found doesn't work as well. I get a lot of um, really small cells. The cells grow huge. I wasn't that happy with the global glue. So uh, if you can't get Elmer's glue all, go the school glue. I think it's probably the next best thing. Uh, spot on treadmill silicone. Now that pour that I showed you before, they had two drops of oil in each. I'm going to up it and do three in each. One, two, three. And as you can see, I've got no black and no white today. I don't really think that the amount of oil is going to make a huge difference. Well, maybe it will. I know my best, best, best pour ever had a heap of oil in it. I think I used probably five drops of oil per cup. I'd have to go back and look at it. I mean, I didn't do the black or the white, but I'm going to see. So I've got seven cups, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Each of them pretty much 50-50 pouring medium to paint. So 50 grams pouring medium, 50 grams of paint, except this guy. He's got two to one, this warm yellow. He's got 60 grams of pouring medium and 30 grams of of paint. This is the plum. It has got 50 grams of pouring medium and 50 grams of paint. That's my plum that I've made. Uh, the sky here. Uh, what did I do with the sky? I wrote it down so that I remember each time. Yep, it's 50-50. Well, actually 60 grams pouring medium, 60 grams of paint. That was my sky blue that I made. It's just uh, cobalt and white. This next one is deep sea. It's a dark green with a touch of blue in it. Deep sea. And that one I did 50 grams of pouring medium and 40 grams of paint because it's a little bit thick. 
I've already told you about this guy, the warm yellow, 60 grams of pouring medium. Actually, to be exact, I did 35 grams of paint. Just to bring him up to the same consistency, he's really thick. This one's Peacock. And the Peacock, I did 50 grams of pouring medium and 55 grams of paint. It was just a little on the thin side because it's got uh, oh, turquoise in it. Turquoise and white. And the turquoise is a really, really thin paint. This one is my deep space, my usual. I've done the same as a deep sea for it. Added a little bit of extra paint. So I've got 60 grams of pouring medium and 55 grams of paint for that one. That's that deep sea. And the last one is peony pink. And I have done, I wanted a little bit more pink in this one. So I've gone 60, 60. 60 grams of pouring medium, 60 grams of paint. So 60 grams is um, two ounces. This size canvas, which is a 30 by uh, 60 centimeter, 12 by 24 inch. It takes 700 grams of mixed paint, which is 25 ounces. Righto, let's do it. I've changed the order up a little bit this time. Um, yeah, I've just got my yellow between my two greenish tones. Light dark. Down here I've got light dark. And then back again, the two pinks next to each other. Well, the pink and the plum next to each other. I think that would look pretty. So... Just the three cups today, which means I can do slightly bigger layers or thicker layers. When you've got more cups, you have to spread your paint out and you don't get as thicker layers. So that can also be a contributing factor to the overall look of your pour. This one's falling through a little bit, so you can tell it's a little bit thinner. If your paint falls straight through, the paint that's in the cup, then it's too thin, not too thick. People think, oh, if it's too thick, it's heavy and it falls through. That's not the case. It's too thin and it falls through. Think of a sieve. If you've got water and you put it in a sieve, it's going to fall straight through, isn't it? But if you've got cream, which is thicker, and you put it in the sieve, it's not going to fall through, is it? It's just going to kind of sit on top, chilling out. It's too thick to fall through. It will eventually, but to begin with, it just sits on top. So think of it that way. Here's my plum. Hopefully the plum next to the light blue will look pretty. This pale pink is kind of acting as a white. It lightens the pour a lot. When I put the photo up, everyone said, oh, you've got white. No, no, I haven't. It's just the pale pink. And maybe you can't see it as well in the photo. I try to get the photos as accurate as I can to the um, original. Sometimes I have to lighten the photo or darken the photo just to touch so that it's a real as close to the real colour as possible. But that's all I do. I don't enhance it or edit it in any way. Well, except for my little background. I put a background on it just to make it stand out. It's just an app, background app. Nothing special. I'm not that technically inclined. Background app is about as technical as I get. The navy done. The last pour, the yellow really got lost, didn't it? Hardly saw the yellow. Kind of looking for a beach sunset kind of a look. You now the sun setting over the beach. You get that. You get obviously you get the blue sky, the blue water. You get the bit of the the green tinge from the ocean and you get the little pinky hues and the bit of yellow from the sun so that's kind of what's going through my mind as to what I want to achieve. I think I'll skip the middle one and just do the two end ones with the 
the yellow because I haven't got a lot of it. I'd rather it make a bit of a statement this time. So if I need to miss a cup, I will. You don't have to do exactly the same in all your cups. You can change them around if you want, you know, your middle one to be darker or have more blue in it or you want the middle one to be your statement and have more plum in it you can certainly do that um, now I think I've just oh, I haven't got much of this one either Put a little dribble of it in each of them maybe a little bit more in this one because it hasn't got the yellow Again, if you don't want to see me layering paints and chatting away, just fast forward. I don't mind. I'll never know. And back to my blue. You can see the blue still a little bit thinner than the others. It's sort of flowing out more, I guess. It's really hard to get everything exactly, exactly the same. You know, you could do your best and look at the little mound and think, yeah, I think they're about the same. And you feel them and you think, yeah, they're about the same. And it's not until you actually pour them out that you see that one is slightly, slightly, just ever so slightly thinner than the others or thicker than the others. And you can see by the, the little ribbon that it leaves on top of the other paint as to how thick or thin they are. And if it leaves a little ribbon and a bit of space between the ribbons, it's a bit on the thicker side. But then if you pour your little ribbons out like that and there's no gap between them, the paint all just meets up with each other, then it's a little on the thin side too. But for this, I don't think it'll really matter. It's such a tiny, tiny little bit different. I think it'll be fine. Righto. I want to do a, a pour with a lot of white in it, negative space. I did one oh, probably about 18 months ago and I didn't video it. I will have to take my camera into my lounge room because it's up on the wall and show you the pour. It was a dirty pour and I did this with my cups and then I poured white like this through it and next to it and then I tilted and like, I didn't get beautiful cells. I mean, I got some cells, but they were big and they were wobbly, but it's like my favourite painting. It's just got a lot of movement in it. It had my blues and my copper and white, and I really love it. So I might try again with something like that. So these I'm just going to flip over. And I'm going to make sure that my two side ones are far enough away from the middle so that the middle can still spread out. If you've got it too close, this paint here pushes in and your middle one ends up being really thin like this and then you can't stretch your cells because the paints all run into the center so just make sure that you've got enough space for the middle one right flip over and a little bit on the corners very green. Why is it so green? I don't know. This one's more blue. Okay. So that's what I was wanting. Um, so these big gaps here, when I tilt side to side to side to side, I'll be able to stretch my cells and hopefully they will go nice and round because I didn't get that on that previous one. They were just all too elongated. Let's just use some of this to go down there rather than have it to fall off. So I've still got stripes, stripies. But as 
I start tilting, those straps will kind of mingle a little bit. Now I'm going to just, I'll turn it and I'll tilt a little bit and then I'll torch because I don't want to torch now because my cells will just get overstretched with so much tilting. So left and right, so my aim here is to fill some of these in. I don't want to go over this edge just yet. I want to just go more side to side. And do I want to torch yet? Do I want to torch yet? Go over there. Go over this little corner down here. Okay, so that's pretty much got that side. And now I will torch. I probably should have torched earlier actually, but hey. Might have to go and do this again and then torch before. It's been a while since I've torched at the beginning. I tend to torch halfway through now, but Maybe I should go again and torch at the beginning. Oh, I went too close there. I was trying not to. I'm trying not to get too close. So I went over it again. Alright, let's leave it at that. Wow. Those are so pretty, those ones. It's a bit busy. I probably have to get rid of some of that. start tilting at the beginning uh, torching at the beginning again because then see these big blobs oh I don't know I'll just do this one for now um, if I want to torch some more no let's not so I'm just going to get this corner not a corner this little edge done here and then I can flip it over I may have tilted too much because now I've only got this little bit to do which means I can't stretch my cells a lot can I I shouldn't have stretched them so much to begin with. I shouldn't have probably tilted so much to begin with. Because I wanted to be able to stretch these cells out. Oh, it's a shame I'm going to lose those. They're so pretty. Okay, let's go. Left and right, walk your paint down. Actually, before they do that, I want to get rid of some of this. So I'm going to take the weight. I'm going to take the weight here to where I want the paint to go off. No point having all the weight up here. See, this is not moving up here. This is the bit that's moving. Just a bit. Just wanted some of it to go it was a bit too busy for me so now I can bring that back see how that hasn't really moved that section because I moved the paint here and then off okay well those cells are looking pretty good let's just hope I can keep them like that now okay let's start walking back and forth again back and forth and towards you at the same time down I don't want the paint to go over the long edge yet. I need it to go to the corners and back. Oh, 
energy. You really have to try and stretch to get to that corner and back. Oh, I did it. Oh, I did it. I did it. Tiny bit over there just to get rid of those big mama cells. Where are my lines? Up there. Okay. Oh, I did it. Yay. I sound shocked, don't I? <laughs> I've still got um, a few little elongated cells, but hey, much better than the last time. Now, what else do I want to do? I oh, need to torch a little bit in here. I didn't torch a lot. Probably could have torched a little bit more. I've got some areas that haven't really got much happening in them, so I'll just give those little areas a a bit of a torch just to bring up some little baby cells. Don't mind the little baby cells afterwards. It's nice to have a, a difference in your cell shape and your cell size, I think. But not too much. I want some background. Just I needed some here and, and some in here. I'm going to turn that around. And while those cells are growing a little bit, I'm just going to fix my corners, pick up some paint. My spatula hit the top. I always do that. <laughs> just covered it up again. Around the bottom. This corner's pretty good, just needs a tiny, tiny little bit there. Walk around here. Oh, I think I'll put some of this plum on that corner. How are my colours this time? The pink, pale pink's not as dominant. I don't know why. Pale pink was much more dominant last time and I did make up more pale pink this time. I made 60 grams instead of 50, not that it's a huge difference. But um, yeah, not very dominant. That pink. I'll just try and match your corners in a similar colour. It doesn't have to be exact to something similar will work. Now, ooh, that plum one with the green ring around it. Now, I didn't use any green green, but the yellow and the blue obviously make green, and that's okay. Haven't got a lot of yellow either, have I? Let's try to get the weight of this down there a little bit but then these start overstretching so you just have to be a bit careful well I don't know which one I prefer this one's got this one's not as busy it's got less cells the cells are bigger overall the cells are better shaped I'll take these gloves off and I'll show you the other one and you can see what you think. Um, and then I think I'm going to have to go again. Same colours and maybe not tilt as much at the beginning. Alright, so have a look at that one. And then have a look at this one. So the cells are a bit smaller in this one. So have a look at the cell size first. They're a little bit smaller. There's more of them. Bigger cells, less of them. So that new one's got more oil in it. I don't really know that it makes a difference. I think it's more in the technique of the torching and the tilting. So this one, the pale pinks really shone through. This one, can't really see the pale pink a lot, can you? 
This one seems more turquoise. This one seems more green. And this one, again, because it has the five flip cups, it's more linear. So there's lots of lines, lots of stripes. You can't really see where the cups started, where the cups ended. This one, you can clearly see where the three cups were. You've got your plum lines there. The plum was the last colour that went into the cup. So it gives me my line. So one, two, three, you can see those lines. So that's the difference between the five flip and drags and the three flips. Which do you prefer? Do you have a preference? Let me know in the comments. Uh, please like and subscribe and share. It would be great if you all shared a couple of videos every now and then just to get my work out there. That would be fantastic. Really appreciate that. Now let's take you in for a close-up. Um, I do think I like today's one a bit better, only because I prefer my paintings not to be so busy. I prefer more background and I do love those more round cells. So I think I give the new one an 8 and I give the old one a 6 <laughs> out of 10. What do you think? Okay, let's have a look. So we've got some yellow there in the left corner. Most of the rings are multicolored. Got some little baby ones there on the left where I've torched again. So the amount that you've torched will determine you know, how many cells you get. So try not to over torch. If you want a mass of cells, go for it. Torch heaps, but I personally like a bit of background. Look at those. Look at that green ring around the plum. So pretty, isn't it? We've got some nice background. Even these little ones here that I've torched afterwards, they're nice and round too. And over here, we've got the yellow around the uh, turquoise there. And then we've got pink around turquoise. They're really pretty if you look at them close up, aren't they? Yellow around green. The yellow seems to encircle a lot of them. Oh, look at that one. It's got a few colours in it, hasn't it? Plum around the light pink and then the dark green and then the um, aqua. So, yeah, I think I like it better. Actually, let me put this one next to that one. Try not to get too much paint on it. There they are together. I don't know if I can get a very good shot. What do you think? Which do you prefer? Five cups, three cups. I do like my three cup flip. So there you go. Thanks for watching. And um, I'm not sure what I'll do next. I might do my negative pour space next, or I might do another one of these. No, I think I've done enough. Hey, two's enough. Two's enough in these colours. Right, moving on. <laughs> I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.